Here's how you can add your own scribbles and doodles to any graphic. We're gonna go over three different ways to achieve this effect, depending on your comfortability with drawing. So our first way is just to use brushes in Photoshop. So I'm gonna make a new layer. I've got my cutout centered here, Christian Boxley on just a blank blue canvas. And with my new layer selected, we'll hit B for my brush tool. I've got the white foreground color selected. And then for my brush, I would recommend something in this dry media brushes folder. And you might have your own brushes that you've downloaded or that already came loaded onto Photoshop. I think these dry media brushes should be there already. So we're just gonna use this Kyle Ultimate Charcoal Pencil, 25 pixels, and we'll close that down. And then with the bracket keys on your keyboard, you can change the size of this brush. Let's say we just wanna make some arrows, for example. I'm just clicking and dragging out different shapes. And so I'll make a new layer between each one so we can kind of mess with them as we go here. But let's say we have a few different arrows. You can tweak the way these arrows look just by Command T, transform them, and then you can drag from these corners if you want to make it bigger or smaller, or distort them as you see fit. If you hold command, you can drag from any of these corners to kind of change the perspective and warp them a little bit. You can condense them down in interesting ways. So here we kind of have like a more flattened arrow. This one feels maybe a little bit long, so we can mess with it further just by putting a mask on it. I'm gonna click this mask icon in the bottom right. And then with my brush tool, a black brush, is how I'm gonna like trim this down. So the black brush on a mask is gonna hide whatever that layer is. So it's basically like erasing, although you can control it a little bit better because you can both erase and paint back in parts of the layer. If I switch the foreground color to white, we can reveal the part of the arrow that we just erased. Maybe we want it a little bit smaller, something like this. There we have some arrows. Some other shapes we can do are just like kind of a, well, we probably want a thicker brush than that. Just like some lines coming off our cutout. And we can change the color of these too. Maybe we want to mix in some red ones. Make a new layer. Yeah, like there. And you get the idea. Basically just drawing things out with your brush. Some other shape ideas. We can do a crown on his head. A little bit thicker. Something not like that. I'm just hitting Command Z to undo if I don't like my initial drawing, but maybe something like this is okay. And then you can move it over, rotate it. This is all just with Command T transforming it. One other thing you can do with brushes is you can draw in straight lines by holding Shift. So if I make a new layer, let's say we want to like do an even scribble at the bottom to create kind of a, a foot shadow scribble effect. I can take a black brush and if I just click once, maybe we'll blow this up a little bit, but click once over here and then hold shift and click again over here, it's gonna draw a straight line between those points. And if I'm holding shift again and click back over here, again, it's just connecting these dots that I'm drawing. So then you can place this under the cutout and there we have like a little bit of a, a shadow for him to stand on. And again, we can transform this as well. Command T and if we wanna like stretch this a little bit or rotate it. You can always mess with these as long as they're on different layers. The other thing we can do to just sell this effect a little bit more is to create a stroke around our main cutout. So if we wanna to go to effects and go to stroke, we have a six pixel stroke position on the outside. So that's basically our first way to create this effect. The second way is to use a font, a brush font ideally, to create similar shapes by using letters. So let's group up these current layers and hide them. And I have this brush font called Good Brush. If you go to defont.com, you can sort for brush under script. Brush. This is just a free resource you can use to download different fonts. They'll say if it's either for personal use or for commercial use. But you'll see I downloaded this Good Brush font. And if I hit T, click to type something out. This L right here, we're going to use that as an arrowhead. Let's Command T and size this up. And let's say we want it pointing to the disk. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer with Command J. 
And then again, T for my type tool. This one, let's hit I, which is just a straight line. And when you're in your, your character editor, which you just get from this button up here, you can stretch this out either vertically or horizontally. So if we wanna stretch that vertically, I'm just gonna bring up this vertical stretch percentage. And then let's just, again, Command T, rotate it around. And maybe it makes more sense for this more faintly brushed side to be on the other end. So let's go ahead and transform this horizontally, or let's actually transform it 180 degrees. And that way we have this like fading out. So it's as if someone brushed it like that and then the long way as well. So I can now bundle these together. We can group them in a folder, call it arrow. And yeah, maybe we wanna shrink this down a little bit. Again, you can do kind of the same manipulations with transforming and with masking as you would do when you hand draw stuff. So the letter O is great for circles, obviously. I'm gonna reset this height back to 100%. And let's blow this up. So sometimes the, the O is just too thick for my liking. So what I like to do is duplicate this O, Command J, and then I'm gonna hit Command T to transform this, and I'm just gonna condense it down a little bit so it's overlapping with the bigger O, and we can bring down the opacity of both of these so you can see. And now I'm gonna mask out the bigger O with the little O, and to do this, we've got our big O right here. I'm gonna Command click. That's gonna select the smaller O, and then with the bigger O selected, I'll hide the smaller one, we're just gonna hit the mask icon and we're gonna invert it. So Command I is invert. You can also option click on the mask icon. So option clicking on the mask icon makes an inverted mask of basically what you're cutting out of the shape. And again, we can transform this however we see fit. But let's put like a circle around the disc, for example, something like this. And if we, maybe we didn't want it going over his hand like this, again, we can mask it further with this charcoal brush, with our black brush on the white mask, just erasing part of it that we don't want. And if you ever want to change the color of these shapes that you're creating, just go down to FX, color overlay, and you know you can choose whatever you want an orange or a red is good here so similar to what we did initially we can make those straight lines coming off of him but this time we're just going to use that eye again so blowing it up you can condense it inward a little bit and you can really manipulate these letters to look like whatever you want which is a super fun and cool way to create these scribble effects can duplicate both of these, bring them over to this side, and we'll flip them horizontally, and you get something like that. And let's see if we can make a good crown with letters. I'm going to use, uh, I guess the L would work again, or a V. Yeah, maybe a V is better. And we're just gonna flip this upside down, and let's make it a little bit bigger. Command J, duplicate the V, bring it next to it, and then we'll do one more like that, can rotate this. And then under it, we just need a line. So again, I is our best friend with this font. And with really most brush fonts, you can draw anything with a single line. And we'll stretch it like that. Maybe we have it like slightly crooked and disconnected, might sell the effect. But now we can bundle all these text layers into crown and position it on are cut out like so. One other brush that might be useful to you in Photoshop is these spatter brushes. So we, we make a new layer underneath our cutout and then go up to, it's not a dry media brush, special effect brushes, Kyle spatter brushes, supreme spatter. You can play with this. It's not like really a, a doodle or scribble effect, but it does kind of give you this like paint brush. Like it was just thrown at a wall behind your cutout. So any combination, hand drawing and fonts, 
both work equally well. Now we're gonna jump into Adobe Fresco on my phone and I'll show you how you can draw things out with your finger and then bring it back into Photoshop. So Adobe Fresco is this app you can download as part of your Adobe subscription. You would have it as a general creative cloud package, but if you just have Photoshop, then obviously don't worry about this part of the video. But we can open up a new document and we'll go to custom size. We'll just match the dimensions that we were working with on the computer, which were 1080 by 1350. Kind of my standard vertical dimensions. White background is fine. We'll hit create in the top right. And now we'll bring in our photo, just the blank export of our cutout on the blue background. And now because it's on the phone, it's a lot easier to kind of draw out the scribbles that you want. So I'm just gonna create a new layer by hitting that plus icon. And if you go to your brushes here, again, you have like charcoal brushes, you've got dry, uh, dry media brushes. So you can mess around with different options here, but let's stick with charcoal, I guess. And I'll just choose my color to be white. And you can move around and draw out some arrows and slash lines, just like we did on our computers. But this maybe gives you a little bit more control. So let's say this is what we want to roll with. Let's go to this icon at the top. We'll go to export as, and then we'll do a PSD. And then you can hit export and send it to your MacBook Pro. So now we've brought our Adobe Fresco file back into Photoshop, and you can see we have our black shadow layer and some of these other crown and star elements, what have you. I can bring our black shadow into our main canvas window and just adjust it as needed. Again, stretch it out. But you get the idea, same effect. We're just using a different program to create different layers that we can then use in our main composition. But there you have it, three different ways to achieve this doodle scribble effect, whatever you wanna call it. Hope this video was helpful and let me know if you have any questions.